top of the world now. Pretty well as high as I can get without hiking up to all that timber. I got an import I got a fairly important email I'm gonna share with all you guys. It prompted me to come up before I leave again. And uh I'm leaving tomorrow until I don't know, four or five days. And then I'll be back. And then uh, I gotta pack all my stuff and get ready to go jump in that bush plane. But obviously I'm probably, I'm probably ruffling some feathers lately, which, um, well, that's what I do. And that's what every single one of you should do too, actually. But um, it's kind of funny. Uh, there's a radio tower, cell tower possibly, not too far away from me. And as I'm up solo, and uh, there's a lot of strange activities going on in this mountain right here in front of me. It's timber over the hill and just over there and across there. It's endless, right? Of course, Dave Polides has to phone me or text me, tell me he's got a crazy story that he has to tell me. And it's definitely an unsettling one. I can't share any details. That's Dave's gig, but thanks, Dave. <laughs> now I got my head on a swivel after hearing that one. Holy shit. The stuff that's going on, you guys, I'm telling you. But anyway, I'm losing the light. And I want to Hopefully get an email or three read out here before I go. And then I'm going to send that drone up. And I'm going to show you exactly where I am. And you're going to be probably pretty impressed with the country around here. Okay, now listen to this, all right? Hi, Steve. My name is John Blatt. I'm 48 years old, a single father. Spent eight years active duty Air Force as a security policeman. And at one time held three top secret clearances doing security for government contractors. I chose to no longer do that type of work for various reasons, but I share this because the story I'm about to tell is very hard to believe, and it's important for me to explain that I'm a very pragmatic, pragmatic down-to-earth, honest person who has a proven track record of being trustworthy. The military and the U.S. government would not have granted me the level of security clearances that I received if it was otherwise. I've had several encounters with the Sasquatch beings over the years, but it was my first encounter that had the greatest impact on my life. I've tried to share this particular story in its entirety with Bigfoot researchers over the years and most either completely ignore my encounter or think it's untruthful. Hopefully sharing it with you will not receive the same treatment and my story will actually be heard. This first encounter happened to me over 40 years ago at the young age of seven. For the first eight years of my life, I grew up in a distant suburb of Chicago called Park Forest and went to Dogwood Elementary School, which was a short walk from my home. It was during a second grade field trip to the Des Plaines Dolomite Prairies Land and Water Reserve that I had the encounter that it would dramatically affect my life forever. I honestly do not remember a lot of that field trip except seeing wildlife and going on walks around the reserve with my classmates. At that age, everything is wondrous and new, and I don't believe I ever had been on a nature walk in the wild before. As can be expected, we were all in fascination and excited to be in such a great exploration of those wetlands. I remember it being a magical experience that is, until I had my encounter. I distinctly remember walking on a dirt path or trail through woodlands and walking in the back of the line of kids. Looking back, I'm really surprised an adult was not in the back over watching the children. It was in the 70s, and life was much different and not as fearful back then. Taking everything in at the back of the line, I'd noticed a small turtle on the ground to the right of the trail, and I stopped to examine it. It was amazing to me because I had never seen a wild turtle before, and I was just beautiful. I'd stopped, squatted down, and after examining it for a while, I picked it up and was just enthralled with this little creature. So much so that I was completely oblivious to the rest of the class and the adults had continued on down the trail and had gone for quite some time. I believe it must have been at least several minutes of being engrossed with my new little friend when I slowly came to the realization that I was completely alone in the woods. I don't remember being frightened at all by this realization, but I know I had to put the turtle back down on the earth where it was before... And as I did so, I remember hearing a noise coming from my left in the direction of the woods. I turned, and before me was something I did not understand. It was a hairy giant. Something that looked similar to Chewbacca from Star Wars was standing about 20 feet from me, but it did not make me feel safe or comforted. It must have come up behind me when I was alone looking at the turtle. My initial instinctual impression slowly changed from stunned astonishment to this growing fear 
as I came to the realization that what was before me was a monster and I was completely alone with it. It stood there just looking at me. Its long brown hair came down and mostly covered its face. I don't remember being able to see its eyes at this point. After a few minutes of being still, it slowly started to sway back and forth while it was looking down at me. I don't remember ever having fight or flight experience or having a desire to run. Although I was becoming more and more terrified by the moment, I never thought of fleeing. Why? I don't know. What happened next is something I've been trying to understand and cope with for the rest of my life. It let out this incredible moan or cry that made my whole body vibrate. It was so very loud. I was making this cry, something happened to me. I could not move. I tried to scream, but I could not open my mouth, and I could not move my body at all. It wasn't that I was just paralyzed with fear, but I was locked in place. I believe I would have just fainted out of sheer terror, but it never happened. It was like it had somehow connected with my brain and was overriding my mental bodily commands. That's really the only way that I can describe it. I was standing there unable to move for what seemed like hours, but I'm sure it was only moments. This giant started walking towards me, came right up to me, only a couple feet away, squatted down, gently grabbed me under my armpits, and stood up with me in its hands. My face was only a couple feet away from its face. It was at this point that I realized I was no longer looking through my own eyes, but I was outside my body looking at myself being held by this creature. Now as an adult, I understand that what I was experiencing was an out-of-body experience, but at the time it was like a dream. I no longer had any fear, but was watching this like I would watch a TV show. I don't know if this creature was causing this to happen to me or if my fright was so bad that I ended up leaving my body. My intuition tells me that it was the Sasquatch being that was causing this to happen to me. While I was in this state, I did not have any fear or anxiety, but remember being very peaceful all the while looking at myself being held many feet off the ground by a giant hairy monster. The next thing I remember was being carried down the path, not by the creature, but by one of my teachers. The creature, of course, was gone, and I was much further down the trail. My teacher was very upset with me because they were apparently trying to find me for quite some time. All the other students were already in the buses and were waiting for me. I was frantically trying to explain that I had seen a giant hairy monster, and I was crying and sobbing. All the adults and the kids were angry with me because, to them, I had run off and caused the rest of the field trip to be cut short because I was missing. I don't know how long I had been gone, but as best as I can recall it, it must have been at least an hour. What made it worse was that I had thoroughly soiled myself during the encounter and the adults were furious with me and the rest of my schoolmates being spiteful and teasing me. I didn't really care about that at the moment. I just wanted someone to listen to me and help me with what I had just gone through. No one, of course, believed me and I just remember shutting down mentally after that. I just don't remember much after that. I know I just want it to be all over and forgotten as soon as possible. I do remember my mom having to go to the school the next day and meeting with my principal and my teacher and feeling like I had done something terribly wrong. I kept thinking to myself that the teachers, forest guides, and other children must have heard the cry that thing made as it was so loud, yet there was never any mention on it at all from, from them about it. Shortly after this is when my nightmares began. Night after night, I would have these terrible night terrors of what I called Siren Monster because its moan sounded like an ambulance siren and I had no other frame or reference to call it anything else. Terrible night sweats and waking up crying and running into my parents' room to try to sleep with them. I remember at night laying in my bed just petrified when I would hear ambulance sirens in the distance thinking that it was a siren monster coming to get me and that it was going to come to my home, break into the house, and walk up the stairs into my room in the middle of the night. It was horrible. My little life was turned upside down, filled with fear and monsters. I tried to explain to my parents what had happened to me, but they didn't know what to think and I thought I must have just took a nap during the field trip and dreamt the whole thing. That was one of the worst parts of the whole experience, not having anyone you trust to believe you, and those who should have been my protectors and comforters were my punishers. After having these nightmares for weeks and months, my mom sat me down and said, sometimes you're afraid and have deep-seated fears that the best thing to do was to face those fears, and a lot of time those fears will go away. So that is exactly what I tried to do. Right at the time my mom had brought me had bought me one of those reader digest books on unexplained mysteries i think it was called strange stories amazing facts and i believe within that book was a sketch that someone drew of the creature they had seen that looked identical to what i encountered that was it it helped me to know that i wasn't crazy but also that this monster was actually called bigfoot or sasquatch so at the age of seven i set out to try to face my fears 
understand what had happened to me, and try to learn everything I could about these beings called Bigfoot. This opened my mind at the young age to a life full of mystery, wonders, and of course, very frightening things. While my friends were learning baseball and getting into sports, I was watching monster movies and reading all that I could get my hands on regarding Bigfoot and other mysterious things. Don't get me wrong, I still played baseball and have had a relatively normal childhood, but I was more interested in mysteries, monsters, and scary movies than anybody else I know. New. One of the lasting effects of this encounter that I had as a child was a lack of better terminology, psychic abilities. I would just know things that I had no way of knowing. I would have visions and spiritual experiences that no one else around me would have a frame or reference for. I would sense things, see dead people, and communicate with spirits, know whether someone was good or bad, have conversations with trees, and see nature beings. Fairies? Actually, I thought all these things were quite normal until I would share them with other kids and quickly realize that this wasn't a normal thing that everyone experienced. I remember telling a teacher about seeing a dead person standing in the corner of the classroom after I was consistently distracted looking at this person. So after class, during recess, she took me aside and asked me why I was ignoring her and just staring into the corner. She looked at me like I was crazy and started a series of psychological evaluations. I remember overhearing the conversation between my mom and the psychiatrist that I was perfectly normal and healthy, but just odd. But after that, I learned to keep my mouth shut. In 1982, the films Poltergeist and The Entity came out. And yes, my parents let me watch just about everything. And within those films were scientists who studied the paranormal and psychic phenomenon who we called parapsychologists. This gave me another frame of reference, and I began to study parapsychology at the the age of 12. I ended up reading every book on parapsychology, Bigfoot, UFOs, ghosts, psychic phenomena, and anything else that falls into the category of the unexplained. I exhausted all of the books at the city library as well as our school libraries. I do not know whether or not my first encounter with Sasquatch was responsible for opening these psychic experiences in my life, whether it was just sheer coincidence, or that my encounter happened because I had these sensitivities in the first place. I do not know what had happened to me during the time I was missing and that I could not remember. Why didn't the Sasquatch just walk off with me, never to be seen again? Why don't I remember anything after it picked me up? I still have many questions that are left unanswered. Since that first encounter, I have had at least four other encounters with these intelligent beings. I do not believe they are monsters or an unclassified ape. They are clearly of an intelligence that is higher than ours and have abilities that we just do not understand. Each one of my preceding encounters have had some level of psychic aspect to them. During each encounter that I have had, I was in a terribly vulnerable position and could have easily ended with great harm coming to me, but that never happened. They could easily have hurt me or ended my life, but chose not to harm me and not to overly frighten me as well. Did my first encounter mark me in some way? It feels like it sometimes. Here's one of the strangest things all about this. When they are near, I can feel them. Even when there is no psychical, even when there is no physical rationale, how I could possibly know that. No wood knockings, no smell, just an overpowering sensation. Not fearful, but intensity that is hard to explain. I've had it when they come close to where I used to live, near the foothills of the North Cascades. I would suddenly wake up in the middle of the night and know they were close. Like they were just stopping by to say hi or something. One night I woke straight up out of a deep sleep, and without any thought, I sat up on my bed and looked out my window. And there are very are two very large glowing amber eyes looking at me, only feet from me. And as I watched, as it turned away into the night, and it, I was like, Oh, it's just a Sasquatch, and laid back down and went to sleep. Who does that? So yeah, this encounter drastically altered my life. If you're interested, I'd like to share my other encounters with you. They are nowhere as intense as my first encounter, but I think they're all very interesting all the same. I've never went looking for them or ever wanted this in my life, especially as a child. I continued to have infrequent nightmares of Sasquatch up until my mid-30s. But there came a moment when I came to acknowledge the strange connection that I have with them, and with deep sincerity... I laid down all my desire to try to prove to other people that they are real, or try to acquire evidence of their existence, for science to acknowledge them. I gave up trying to have my name for myself I gave up trying to have a name for myself from the Sasquatch community. I stopped trying to find them and trying to get evidence. I stopped researching them like they're a pet project of mine. I let them go. It was only after I did this that my nightmares ended. Actually, the night after I let them go, I had a powerful dream of the Sasquatch in which this being came up to me while standing on a bridge. 
It knew that I had given up my pursuit of them and had let them go, go in my life. The Sasquatch then transformed into a human in front of me, smiled, and said thank you. I felt deep gratitude from it, and it turned and walked away. By turning into a human, it showed me that it wasn't a monster, but a living, intelligent being like us. He was a person. I still have dreams with them in it, but they are never scary or intimidating. If anything, the dreams with them in it are usually pleasant, deep, and powerful. I've made peace with them, and I'm grateful for the experiences that I that they have given me. I consider the connection in my life is a very interesting blessing, full of mystery and wonder. Yes, I have done my research and have probably and have read probably hundreds of books about them over the years, but I no longer consider myself a researcher or desire to be considered an expert. With as crazy and narcissistic as the Sasquatch and cryptic community is, I found out early on that it is better to stand back in the shadows and not participate in the toxic drama and egocentric personalities and groups. People who are Sasquatch hunters or who are in Bigfoot groups and do field expeditions and research wonder why they don't have any meaningful encounters with them. I mean, I don't want to have any meaningful I mean, I don't want to have any meaningful encounters with them, the researchers, so why would these super intelligent psychic beings want to either? Just a thought anyways. Thank you for taking the time to read my story, or at least part of it. Feel free to use my name or to edit where it might be not as clear as if you choose to share with others. I have no agenda. If you don't want to share this, that's okay too. I truly respect you and like you as a person. You seem genuine and real to me and are not really a part of the community. I honestly don't care if others believe me or not. That is none of my business. I just think this is important to share all the information to the world instead of trying to sanitize it to fit some agenda or ideology, like Sasquatch being an ape. We should no longer be afraid to share the stranger details in our encounters just so that we don't offend someone, or just to make our encounter easier for others to believe. We shouldn't have to fear what other people think. If anything, I hope others will feel more free to share all the weird and strange details that are held back due to fear of ridicule. That time needs to come to an end, and I feel you are helping others like myself to share openly without fear of negative backlash. Thank you again for the work you are doing. May you be blessed in all that you do, John Blatt. P.S. Just for you, Steve. Bracket. You can share this publicly if you want to. I've been in the shadows of the Sasquatch community since the beginning of the internet. I've been on all the Bigfoot forums, talked to all the big names, went to the conferences, done my own independent field investigations. You name it, I've done it. I've known about mostly everything that you are sharing with the world regarding Money Grabber and all of his cronies. All the big name Sasquatch teams and all the bullshit they pull. The con jobs, the discrediting, the sanitizing of information, the bullying, all the drama. I've distanced myself away from it all while keeping an eye on it over the years. I've had my own run-ins with them, and I've seen so many people used and abused and silenced. There are some good people who aren't all fucked up who try to be a light in the Bigfoot community darkness, but I've never had the stomach for it. I'm much more interested now in the whys instead of the whats and the hows of Sasquatch and the Sasquatch community. Why do people have encounters and and not others? Why are most of the people in this community are already narcissists or becoming narcissistic after getting into the community? People look for support and answers after their experiences, but either get sucked into being an expert, trying their own, starting their own group, or buying into the mainstream bullshit, then becoming filled with the drama and attacking others who see things differently than you do. Why do experiencers? either completely isolate themselves and tell no one, or they go the opposite direction and become an egocentric asshole who wants to be the one to finally answer the Sasquatch mystery. It is, for the most part, one giant shit show. The TV shows, the documentaries, many of the conferences, and even most of the recent books. There is a real reason why this is all suppressed and oppressed. I think there are definitely forces at work that seek to make Bigfoot researchers and experiencers and the Bigfoot community as a whole to fill it with drama, lies, misinformation, disinformation, and in some ways consume people's lives. Many people who are invested in their Bigfoot research or trying to find answers are completely consumed with Bigfoot. It becomes, it becomes everything to them. They live it, breathe it. I've seen people lose their minds, their bank accounts, their jobs and their families, everything to finding Bigfoot. At least that's what it seems like on the surface. I tend to think that there are soul lessons for people who have encountered these amazing and sometimes terrifying beings. It's almost like, here's this experience, this encounter, 
Now, how are you going to handle it? What is it trying to say to you? In some ways, I think that there is a deeper meaning behind these encounters. Like we have encounters because there is a deeper lesson to be learned if we are willing to learn it. I'm not trying to get all spiritual here, but encounters with these beings are almost like a trial. Will we be overcome by them? Will we be swept away at the surface of things? Will we see the deeper meanings these experiences give to us? I think there may be a bigger reason why these beings appear to some people and others they do not. And those who do encounter them, the information about them is withheld or twisted so that these deeper individual lessons cannot be learned. We get swept away with all the bullshit. Sorry, I just don't have anyone else to talk to about these things. I don't have any friends who are into these matters. I guess my point is that I love what you're doing and I support you 100%. Cheers, my friend, John. Well, and there you go. If that isn't probably one of the more interesting and what I might even call exciting emails that I've received to date. If I could read that one email to all of you once a week, I have a feeling, and everybody would just listen, I have a feeling that um, a lot more answers would come out, a lot more of these fraudulent sacks of shit would get kicked to the curb instantly, and we will all be filled with honest knowledge. And that's my take on that one. And uh, thank you, John. I absolutely appreciate you emailing me, and I absolutely appreciate you sharing all of your experience with all of us via my YouTube channel. And um, I'd imagine by the time you see this video, you would have already saw that other video I made about uh, revealing the truth of what a lot of people have been doing for real behind the scenes who have suckered all of you into reporting to them. And I can't stress enough to encourage all of you to try to kick that particular group of individuals to the ditch just kick into the ditch. They've been keeping everybody going in circles, withholding information and twisting people's experiences shared for a long time now. And now the time has come for it. Is Now the time is here for it to come to an end. Period.